South China Morning Post, 12th of November 2022, Why Cambodia Feels Conflicted Over the China-Built Road Between Phnom Penh and Senukville. China implemented this project as part of her debt trap diplomacy against Cambodia, the politicians involved were paid to do so. The initiative primarily benefits the Chinese and is unpopular with the Cambodian people. People are excited to use the new route but are apprehensive about the city of Senecville, which is at one end of it, going through economic development. What form of Chinese investment has the potential to charm the Cambodian people? It might be possible to find an answer by examining the advantages, expenses, and reactions of two significant undertakings. Since it was made available to the public for a one-month free trial beginning in early October, Cambodia has enthusiastically welcomed the first freeway connecting the nation's capital Phnom Penh to the coastal region of Prasianuk. The China Road and Bridge Corporation CRBC, which borrowed money from several Chinese development banks, undertook the 187 km $2 billion US dollars Phnom Penh Sinekville Road project as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. About 200,000 automobiles had used the road by mid-October. According to local media, drivers pleased with the route's convenience, effectiveness, and safety gave way to warm favorable reviews. This author, who traveled by car from Sinekville to Phnom Penh, must acknowledge that he, too, feels satisfied. Instead of taking the busy National Road 4, the route cuts travel time in half to just two hours. Only six accidents were reported in the first two weeks of operation, an accident rate of 0.004%, with no injuries or fatalities. Given the usually poor status of road safety in the nation, this encouraging start is greatly appreciated. In Cambodia, traffic accidents are the sixth greatest cause of death, with 5.4 deaths per day on average. Although commuters surveyed by the local media indicated that they would be prepared to pay to use the new route once the free launch period has been over, happiness with the highway goes beyond practical advantages like speeding up travel time. Police have been forced to warn drivers to avoid using the emergency lane to take photographs in front of the stunning scenery. For a family car and a truck, a one-way, end-to-end trip costs 12 US dollars and 60 US dollars, respectively. The favorable response likely inspires more belt and road development projects. The Cambodian government has already hired CRBC to construct a road connecting Phnom Penh with Vietnam. Next year is anticipated to see the start of construction. The new roadway promises a significant economic impact by lowering logistical costs and boosting trade competitiveness, notwithstanding the business community's lack of response. The road cuts down on trucking time in half and links four provinces with significant economic activity. Most importantly, it connects to the Senecville Autonomous Port, the only deep sea port in the nation with a full range of services. According to the most recent statistics, the port handles imports and exports worth more than two billion US dollars annually, or around 70% of all goods entering and leaving Cambodia. Pra Sihanouk's tourism is expected to benefit from the route, according to Prime Minister Hun Sen, who said that it's beneficial for Pra Sihanouk provincial citizens because a lot of tourists have been there. The Pra Sihanouk province welcomed almost 140,000 visitors during a single week in mid-October, most of whom were domestic tourists, according to the Ministry of Tourism. This number is encouraging because Chinese tourists, who make up most of Cambodia's foreign visitors, have been prevented from leaving their country due to ongoing travel restrictions brought on by the pandemic. While Senukville's tourism industry appears to be rebounding, the future for local companies and operators with a Cambodian ownership structure is still uncertain. The city, a private sector effort associated with a belt and road that has drawn significant Chinese investment and been promoted as a multi-purpose metropolis, similar to Shenzhen in China, has essentially become a waste of time. Senecville was formerly bustling with real estate development. 
Still, it collapsed due to the migration of Chinese visitors and investors following the government's ban on online gambling in 2019 and the subsequent impacts of COVID-19. Over 1,000 unfinished constructions were strewn about the city by August 2022. Nevertheless, it is populated by Chinese businesses that run the staples of the tourism industry, casinos, hotels, and restaurants, and related enterprises, including stores, supermarkets, beauty parlors, and taxi services. Locals have few employment options to save low-paying positions in tourism and construction because Chinese managers and laborers frequently oversee larger businesses and tourist facilities. Local business owners have grumbled that competing with Chinese business owners is difficult. According to the most recent data, Chinese investment in Cynicville generated an estimated $3.50 to $5 billion in annual revenue, 90% of which came from gaming, which Chinese tourists mostly frequented. However, Cynicville's tourism has been non-existent for the past three years due to a 2019 ban on internet gaming and COVID-19 cross-border restrictions. This has dealt a severe blow to struggling local and Chinese firms. In recent years, Cynicville has also developed into a hub for Chinese organized gangs transnational human trafficking, online fraud, and associated crimes. Numerous Southeast Asians and Cambodians have been victims of these crimes, which have sparked global outrage and the Prime Minister's directive to take action against the syndicates. Even though thousands of criminals have been apprehended, deported, and hundreds of victims have been saved, these illegal activities have damaged the reputation of China and, consequently, the Belt and Road throughout Southeast Asia and elsewhere. According to the locals, the Chinese in Senegal are formidable business rivals and may be involved in illegal activities. Therefore, it is crucial to take Chinese-related crimes seriously to enhance China's reputation and investor perception. Two China-driven projects so display notable disparities. Chinese firms have been pushing away locals in Cynicville due to the city's metamorphosis amid a turbulence of boom and bust construction and illegal activities, even if the new road appears to offer real benefits to Cambodians and prospective profits for the Chinese operator. The problems in the city highlight weaknesses in project planning and governance that have also restricted Cambodians' access and involvement. Even though the entire costs and benefits of the road are still unknown, it demonstrates how transport infrastructure projects could win over the hearts of Cambodians due to their immediate and well-received benefits enjoyed by users and positive spillover effects for the economy.